Okay, so good morning. So last class we saw about uh, data hazards. They are uh, what could happen if the program is run as such without any you know control by the hardware. Um, if it can lead to a uh, you know wrong result, and that's what we termed as hazard. And all the hazards that were uh, present and for which we gave solutions were because of data, right? It was, if you look at the uh, instruction, right, there is an operand and the opcode, uh, uh, opcode and the operand, and the, all the hazards that we have talked of was because of the operands. And so that's why we call them data hazards. The next thing is, next type of hazard is what we call as a control hazard. What is a control hazard? Suppose I have a conditional jump, right? You have used a lot of conditional jumps, hopefully, now. Yes or no? Hello? Yes. Okay. So, so, what would happen in the context of a conditional jump? I fetch the instruction. When I am decoding the instruction, and that is the point whether I will be knowing it is a jump or not. right? And then what could happen? I do not know what would be the next instruction to fetch. Do I know? Because if the conditional jump is taken, then it will be some other instruction that I need to fetch. If the conditional jump is not taken, then it will be the next instruction that is following the conditional jump. So, when I fetch a jump instruction, I will never know whether it is a, uh, what is the next instruction to fetch, correct? Is, should it be the next, should it be the instruction that follows or should it be the target instruction? So, jump on a condition to some address, right, that is called the target address. Should it be the inst instruction stored in the target address or should it be the con next instruction? This I cannot find out when there is a, uh, when, the, when, when you see a conditional jump. When will I know that? I will know that there is a, uh, the target address only when the previous instruction finishes its execution stage, right? When I have jump on 0 to some label L1, and then I have several instructions and L1. One, so the next instruction to be fetched will be known only when this particular instruction finishes execution. Till that, I cannot even fetch the next instruction. Are you able to follow? Right. So, in contrast to the uh, you know the uh, true dependencies that we have talked yesterday, right? We have, we have talked about true data dependency raw where I have to wait only at the data fetch stage and that also I will get by, uh, I will get it fast by because of uh, the, uh, the operand forwarding. But in this case, when I see a conditional jump, I cannot even fetch the next instruction. So, I have to wait for at least 4 cycles, assuming each one will take 1 cycle. I need to wait for at least 4 cycles till I get that one, right. So, going back to our context of what we did yesterday, there was an instruction fetch unit which was bringing up six instructions a set at a time. Imagine one middle instruction being a jump, right? Then the other two fetches that we are, we are going to fetch six instructions at a time, the remaining two instructions cannot even be fetched. So, when I am fetching a set of instructions and the moment I see a jump, the remaining instructions may become useless, may be correct or may become useless, okay? So, so the pipeline essentially is stopped or uh, it is stalled because I see a conditional jump and that is why this hazard, uh, the conditional jumps are called control instructions and that is why this hazard is called a control hazard, fine? Are you all able to follow? Right. Now, <coughs> what can we do? Every time I see a conditional jump instruction, if I am going to wait for 3 cycles, right? And in a, in a program, you know, there is a, I think I have mentioned this in the previous class, there is something called a 90-10 rule. 90 percent of the instructions will work only for 10 percent of the time, will take only 10 percent of the time. There will be one core nucleus part of the program which will take 90 percent of the time. So, there is an opposite 1090, it implies another 1090 rule, where 10 percent of the instruction will take 90 percent of the time. Okay. So, how will 10 percent of the instruction take 90 percent of the time? There will be some loops, there will be conditional control statements which will make it repeatedly execute. So, 
and your you take any program except hello world okay right every program will have an if if else statement while statement for statement right any sensible program which does even simple finding the uh, maximum of two numbers will have an if statement okay so so there will be lot of control statements and inside a program right so when i take the profile or what you call as the execution trace please note this word this is a very important word execution trace of a program execution trace is not the assembly program listing execution trace is what are all the instructions that are executed from the start of the program till the end of the program so there will be some 10% of the program which will be repeated lot of times right so i start the program which address is executed which instruction is executed next 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 till the end of the program so you will see many instructions repeatedly executed so when you take the execution trace of the program you will see lot of such conditional branch and for every conditional branch if i am going to wait for three cycles then it becomes a nightmare my performance will go for a toss so i have to do something about this okay and that leads us to what we call as a branch prediction okay now we will go back to this mode please take notes so what is branch prediction so let us take this there is an instruction fetch stage there is a decode then decode data fetch execute and then store data okay now <coughs> when i see a branch i want to go and predict what 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 will i predict about branch here will you get married or not married or what will you get huh what will you predict about a branch whether it will be taken or not taken correct right so I'll, i am seeing a conditional branch right when i see a conditional branch i'll put c with quote and quote and how do you implement this c is a big story i'll say that when i see a conditional branch at the fetch stage immediately i should go and predict a this fellow will be taken or this fellow will not take what do you mean by taken the branch condition will become true and uh, and what i need to fetch next is not the instruction that is following it it should be the instruction to which it is going to jump to let us take example here jump one is at some l1 um so i have instruction 1 instruction 2 instruction 3 and i have l1 here which is instruction 4 so i can have many things here the moment i see j is at l1 okay i will have an extra hardware which is called a branch predictor or branch prediction unit and that branch prediction unit will tell me this jump will take for sure that if what the moment it says it will take then what should i fetch next i should fetch i4 because it will take if this branch prediction unit says it will not take then what should i fetch i should fetch i1 so the decision of whether the branch is to be taken or not taken where should i make the decision in the fetch stage itself then only i can convey the decision immediately to the program counter which will start fetching the next instruction if i make the decision the jump instruction came here if i make the decision when this instruction comes somewhere here then i have to stall the pipeline so the decision has to be taken where in the fetch stage itself the moment some instruction comes i should somehow see recognize right i should somehow recognize that it is a branch instruction and then i have to predict the hardware the branch prediction hardware will predict whether this conditional jump instruction will be taken or not taken and if it is going to be taken if this fellow says yes it will be taken then i should fetch i1 so the next is uh, i4 so at this point i will predict suppose i say taken when this instruction actually comes here i4 will be fetched 
if this fellow takes not taken then when the when this instruction actually comes here i1 will be fetched correct all followed so so now what should we what are the steps now number 1 i should recognize that it is a jump instruction and then i should do the prediction and most importantly for this prediction i need a rational okay uh, i need some rational for doing this prediction so these steps we will explain in detail okay now the most important challenge here is that how will i recognize it is going to be a conditional jump instruction right if it is an unconditional jump i don't have any issue so the problem comes only if it is a conditional jump instruction as of now how will i recognize if it is a con conditional jump instruction before even decoding that instruction i need to decode to find out it is a conditional jump that's why you have the stage called decode stage how will i even recognize that it is a jump instruction conditional jump instruction before i decode that instruction is it a important question yes or no even before decoding the instruction somehow i should find out that it is a conditional jump how will i find it? i can't decode it at the fetch stage forget it and i can't do any special decode to find out if it is a jump instruction and all okay any extra hardware i'm already that fetch is like a monkey okay i'm going to fetch six fellows i have to <laughs> resolve whether there is data dependency so many things i have to do there let, let me just carefully see please understand this very very crucial very slowly i'll do this now let us give some address 1000 4000 5000 6000 7000 okay now we have some then I have jump is at some What is the structure uh, equivalent in C? Huh? Loop, what loop? Huh? It should be a while loop or a for loop, not a do while because the condition is checked at the beginning, okay? Right? Followed? So, should be a for loop or a while loop. So, you do some condition check here, then you do a comparison here, and based on that idea, you again jump to. So, L1 would be somewhere here, okay? So, let me see. The first time the instructions are coming. So, let me again put this, uh, we have to repeat this n times in position, fetch, decode, fetch, ins, decode, fetch, data, execute. Okay. Now, first I1 will be fetched, I1 will be decoded, I1's data will be fetched, I1 will be executed, right? Now, jump will be fetched. First time, so 1004 will be fetched. When 1005 is fetched, please understand that I will not know it is a conditional jump. But the moment I come to this decode stage, here I will understand it is a conditional jump. Right? And I will also understand where it has to jump. At the decode stage, I will know that if this condition is true, I need to jump at where? L1, that is 1011. At that point, I will create what you call a, a, a content addressable memory. Yesterday we saw that, right? Can is also called associative, fully associative memory. Both are same. Both, FAM or CAM or synonymous, fully associative memory. In this memory, I will go and make an entry. At the decode stage, first time I do not know, that is a jump. When the jump reaches the decode stage, I know that it is a conditional jump. I am only handling conditional jumps. I am not 
unconditional jump there is nothing to predict anyway it will be taken right you all know what difference between conditional and unconditional jump correct this is an unconditional jump there is no condition involved if it comes here it will take but only the conditional jump i have a doubt whether it will take or not take okay now the first time i see this condition conditional jump i will store this 1005 with l1 the target address in this case this is 1000 11 correct i will store 1005 with 1011 this is actually also called as branch target buffer so i will store 1005 and i will say it has to jump to 1011 then i will be executing i2 i3 i4 i5 again i will come to 1004 next time when i am coming to 2005 every time when i am coming when i get a new address in the program counter i will go to this cam and say hey is this address stored in you if this address is stored in you then i know that it is a conditional jump right are you able to follow so every time the decode unit decodes a new conditional jump instruction new in the sense the first time that conditional jump instruction is executed in this program immediately that pc the address of where it is stored along with the target address l1 that it will store in the branch target buffer this is a content addressable memory every time when i am fetching an instruction i will go to the fellow the cam the btb the branch target buffer and i ask a hey, is this address stored in you if that fellow says yes then i know it is a conditional branch i not only know that it is a conditional branch i will also know if that branch is taken where i should jump so the content addressable memory as i explained yesterday will give you not only the address but it will also give you some data associated with that query element right yesterday i i, I discussed the uh, you know content addressable memory in the context of memory aliasing same thing here so what will happen now let us quickly hand simulate this 1004 comes so first time 1004 comes then 1005 1005 gets entered here then then 1005 comes to this place for execution at this point first time what will happen 1004 comes 1005 comes then 1006 1007 1008 it will come in this direction first time it will it will go here and it will execute when the branch is taken if the branch is taken then all that i have fetched when 1005 is here i would have fetched 1006 1007 1008 right or bunch more lot more instructions i could have fetched now if the branch is taken at this point then i have to load th all these things are wrong i have to flush the pipeline this is called flush right so first time itself if this jump is going to be taken then what will happen this is 1005 this is i come to this stage and this is where i know whether it's going to be taken or not by the time i'll have 1006 1007 1008 already in the pipeline now if i say it is going it is taken that means fetching of those instruction 1006 1007 and 1008 are all wrong so i have to go and handle that if when i reach this point and i find that it is not taken then i can basically continue then all the processing i have done for 1006 1007 1008 doesn't go as a waste you get it are you able to follow right now that means along with this target address i will also have one prediction data this prediction data will tell me whether the branch is going to be taken or not taken and that is where i am building some intelligence into this right so at the first stage so let us assume again 1005 is going to get executed when 1005 is getting executed it will go and ask this cam 
hey is it uh, so it will ask this query is 1005 stored in you if 1005 is stored in it then we know that it is a conditional branch we also know if that branch is going to be taken which target address I need to go and I will also know whether that what is with high probability that that branch will be taken or not taken I will have some prediction if the prediction says yes it should it is going to be taken so immediately I will go and pump the uh, program counter to be 1011 so the next instruction that is going to be fetched would be I6 if the prediction says it is going to be taken and if the prediction is correct then what happens I have saved 3 cycles if the prediction is wrong I waste 3 cycles correct uh, are you able to follow yes or no right similarly so the, the this is the entire scenario so what we have seen now is how will the fetch stage recognize that this is a jump conditional jump instruction see that it is a conditional jump instruction it basically uses a content addressable memory to solve this problem are you able to follow yes so now the challenge is that this content addressable memory will have limited number of entries now what is the size of the content addressable memory that I need to put so that you know all my branches are taken care of if the size is limited then what will happen then you will not have enough space to store if you have 100,000 branches and you have only 10 entries then you are in a soup so how do you make a decision of what should be the uh, you know size of the content addressable memory when you design an architecture what should be the number of entries in a content addressable memory that itself is a very very important uh, uh, decision that architecture decision you want to make so when you study and course on advanced computer architecture or your mtech elective you are expected to be taught on what how do you design cams how do you design branch target buffers what would be the size of this branch target target buffer how do you come out with this size chumma night dream i got uh, 1024 entries can i put no because cam why can't i put large uh, content addressable memories because they consume lot of power okay the chip will burn okay so so and it will also consume lot of area so lot of decision making has to come and that is where benchmarks play a crucial role okay so there are different benchmarks and these benchmarks basically when you run them it will it will tell you if i keep the branch target buffer as 10 entries what will be my performance if i make it 20 entries what will be my performance 30 entries what will be my performance and so on so forth okay so it will kill it will kill your performance beyond some point you will see that the area is too large below some point you will see that the area is very less and but but your performance goes for it us please note that if for if there are many many branches and ultimately your 1005 gets out of this can for some reason right then the next time when you bring 1005 it will not be recognized again this whole recognition problem has to restart and this branch target buffer will also need to have a replacement policy right what is a replacement policy the replacement policy is that I need to know uh, if, 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 the, if all the entries are full and a new entry is coming which entry should I evict to put this new entry I should make a decision of which, which entry should I evict so that we will talk about replacement policies in the context of cache in great detail but there are lot of replacement policies all these things I will cover post quiz 2 when we do the memory management of caches cache, cache organization and cache design ok yeah Sir, yes I didn't quite get how uh, we are able to get that uh, we have a conditional jump and that's how we put it yeah see the first time this 1005 instruction comes in into your fetch instruction unit fetch unit it will not recognize that it is a conditional jump then it that 1005 goes to the decode unit decode unit will recognize it is a conditional jump then it will go to the content addressable memory this part of the content addressable memory and it will go and store 1005 
and the target address 1011 along with some prediction data, default prediction data. It will store it in the content addressable memory. Now, every time some instruction is fetched, as and when the instruction is fetched, the value of the program counter, the address where that instruction is stored is also given as a query to this fully associative memory. So, the next time 1005 is fetched here, when the 1005 is coming and falling into this unit, that same time that query will also go to this content addressable memory. A 1005 is there or not, I am fetching 1005, it is coming from memory, I am also asking the CAM, is 1005 there or not. This CAM will say, second time it will say, yes it is there. Then it will also give not only, not only it will say yes it is there, but it will also say that if this conditional branch is going to be ex taken, then this is the target address to which I need to dump and it will also say this is the prediction that this, uh, uh, you know, uh, this conditional branch will be taken or not. So, two data come at the fetch instruction stage itself. So, the fetch instruction unit in addition to all those that it has been doing in the past that we have described, it will also say, okay, now this is a conditional jump instruction and this is the target address and let us look at the prediction. Oh, it is predicted to be taken. So, the next instruction I should fetch is not 1006, but should be 1011. So, when the, when the jump instruction goes to the decode stage at that point itself, the next instruction that will be fetched would be 1011. But suppose it says this is 1005, it is a conditional jump instruction, but the prediction says it will not be taken, then it will not do anything, the jump will come here and then whatever you are predicted, so it, the prediction is not taken, so 1006 will be fetched here, right? Do you understand? Now what will happen, the jump eventually will come here to the execute, at this point you will realize actually what is going to happen, something has been predicted and something is actually going to happen. When what actually happens is different from what is actually predicted, if there is a difference, then what we need to do, we have to go and flush out the pipeline and restart the pipeline with the correct one. If there is a misprediction, this is what we call misprediction, when will I realize that there is a misprediction? When I come to this execute stage what I have predicted and what is actually happening is different. I said not taken, but it is actually taken. So, all the three instructions that are there in the pipeline has to be flushed out. What I say now, I said taken, but it is not taken. So, again, so this, mis when I realize that there is a misprediction, I will go and undo what I have done in the past three things. I will flush the pipeline and restart it. So, in a misprediction, I have a penalty in this case of three, three cycles at least. You are getting this? Okay. So, so this is how the control hazard is handled. Okay. So, if one minute, if I am not going, if I am going to reduce the misprediction rate, then I am going to get excellent performance. Right? If I am going to have lot of mispredictions, then my performance actually goes for a toss. You are getting this? Right? So, the ultimate objective for me is to go and reduce the misprediction rate and that is what we will work on. Okay then, thanks.